Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to actually be looking at worded problems. So, so far, we've only really been doing problems where you've given a picture and you have to try and visually work it out. But today, we're going to be looking at words instead. Okay, so today, we're going to be applying our knowledge of Pythagoras to worded problems. So, that's the key information today is worded problems. So, there's going to be a little bit of writing and a little bit of reading in this one. So your success criteria is that you can interpret the question and select key information. Then you need to be able to draw a triangle and label it. It's really important to draw a picture because it really helps you visually understand what's happening. And then you need to be able to choose the right formula and substitute and solve. So this part we're really, really confident at. We've had lots of practice at. Today it's about interpreting what's written. So this is our first worded question. So obviously there's a lot of information here that we need to take in. So I'm gonna read it. So a student is hanging a painting on the wall. She leans a 1.5 meter ladder against the wall. If the foot of the ladder is 80 centimeters away from the wall, how far up the wall does the ladder reach? So there's some key information that we need to try and select. Okay, so we've got a 1.5 meter ladder, the foot of the ladder is 80 centimetres away from the wall. And what we're trying to find is how far up the wall does the ladder reach. So what we need to do is we need to draw a picture. So obviously the picture that we need to draw is going to be of a right angle triangle. It's Pythagoras, so there's going to be a right angle triangle involved. So if I'm picturing a wall and a ladder leading up against it, the wall is going to be going straight up. A wall is never crooked, a wall is always straight up. So I'm gonna call this my wall, and this is obviously gonna be the floor, okay? The floor is down here. So that only leaves one place for my ladder to be. So my ladder must be here. So once I know what is what in my picture, this is obviously my right angle, because the floor and the wall are only ever going to be at right angles to each other. I need to label my measurements. So my ladder is 1.5 meters. So my ladder is 1.5 meters. The foot of the ladder is 80 centimeters away from the wall. So this is the foot of the ladder and this is the base of the wall. So this distance here is 80 centimeters. Something to be mindful of though, is this says centimeters and this says meters. So that is a way that they're trying to trick you with this question. So 80 centimeters, I know that is the same as 0 0.8 meters. Okay, it's almost one meter. What we're trying to find is how far up the wall does the ladder reach? So what we're trying to find is this bit here. Now I'm gonna call that W because that can represent the wall, okay? You could call it H if you wanna do the height. You can call it what you can call it X, it really doesn't matter. All right, so I've interpreted the question, drawn and labeled a triangle, so now I need to do my calculations. So I'm gonna start off with my formula. Are we trying to find a long side or a short side? Well, this is the long side here. So this is C, which means I have A and B over here. I'm gonna make this B, I'm gonna make this A. So then I need to substitute accordingly. And I also need to rearrange. So I'm trying to find B. So it's gonna be B squared equals C squared minus A squared. I don't know what B is but I know it's a W now. C is 1.5, A is 0.8. I need to do that on my calculator because I don't know what those are in my head. So 1.5 squared is going to be 2.25, 0 0.8 squared, oh, squared is going to be 0.64. Okay, now I can do my subtraction, 2.25 minus 0.64 is going to be 1.61. 1. 
Now, we're not finished because we've got a squared here still, so we don't want the squared. So we're just going to go W equals the square root of 1.61. The square root of 1.61 is 1.27 1, uh, because 26 becomes 7. We can put that in meters because that's what our question is in. If we wanted to, because this doesn't specify how many decimal points, we can make it 1.3 meters, only because in the question there is one decimal place, so it gives uh, makes sense for it to be in the answer. Now, let's double check. Does this make sense? 1.5 is the longest side. This is a short side, so it needs to be shorter than 1.5, and it is, so that works out well. Okay, for this second example, what we have is a helicopter that is hovering 20 meters above a helipad. Michelle is 15 meters away from the helipad. What is the distance between Michelle and the helicopter? Okay, so same as always. First step is to draw a picture, or it's a triangle, draw a right angle triangle for what is happening. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my triangle like this. Okay, I can see that this is gonna be my right angle here. So what we've got is a helicopter this is my beautiful drawing of a helicopter, is hovering 20 meters above a helipad. Okay, so that's our first piece of information. A helicopter is 20 meters above a helipad. Michelle is 15 meters away from the helipad. And we wanna find the distance between Michelle and the helicopter. Okay, so that's me selecting my key information. All right, so helicopter, this is my helipad here, okay? And then this is Michelle, okay? So we know that the uh, helicopter is 20 meters above the helipad. So I'm gonna label this as 20 meters. And we know that Michelle is 15 meters away from the helipad. So this part here is 15. We're trying to find the distance between Michelle and the helicopter. So that's the diagonal that we're trying to find. So I'm gonna call this D for distance. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call mine D for distance. Okay, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. What are we trying to find, A, B or C? Well, I know that this is across from the right angle, so that means this must be C which means this can be A and this can be B, doesn't matter, they're interchangeable. So now we're up to substitution. So I'm, well, I don't have to rearrange my formula is the first thing that I should say because I'm trying to find C. So formula as is, is great. So I'm gonna change A to 20. I'm gonna change B to 15. I'm gonna change C to D because that's what I've decided to call it. I could have just kept calling it C, but I didn't. So 20 squared is 400, 15 squared is 225, that's what we're trying to find. So this is going to be 625 because adding them together. All right, we're not done yet, remembering that we've got this squared still here. So that means we need to do the square root of 625. That will give us D on its own. So the square root of 625 is 25. Hmm. All right, so we can say that D is 25 meters because in our units we're using meters. So we can just double check. Does this make sense? Short side 20, short side 15. Therefore, the long side needs to be longer than either of them. And it is, so that makes sense. Okay, so this is our last example for a worded problem. We've got Jerry. Jerry goes for a walk. He travels north three kilometers. Then he heads east for two kilometers before heading directly back home. How far did Jerry walk? So the key information is he traveled north three kilometers. Then he went east for two kilometers. And we want to know how far did Jerry walk? So step one, draw a picture. We're gonna go north, then we're gonna go east, okay? 
and then he goes directly back home. Oh, funny about that. I've made myself a nice little right angle triangle. Okay, so labeling. If Jerry goes north three kilometers, this is gonna be three kilometers. Then he heads east for two kilometers. Two kilometers, just so we know. That might be useful information for you. All right, so then that obviously means that this is east. And then he heads directly back home. Now we don't know how far Jerry walked to get directly back home. I'm gonna call this H for heading home. So this is actually a two-step problem because it's not asking for how far was the walk directly home. It's asking for how far did he walk all together. So this and this and this. So step one is that we need to find H, but then we're gonna to have to find the total of the three sides. So that's using my problem solving skills in this one. Okay, so I'm gonna have here, I'm gonna go step one. So we're gonna write out A squared plus B squared equals C squared. As always, I need to label my sides. This is gonna be C because it's opposite the right angle. So I'm gonna make this A and this B. Now I can do my substitution because there's no need to rearrange because I'm trying to find the longest side and this formula works for that. A is gonna become three. B is gonna become two. We don't know what C is, except I need to change my C to H. Because that's what I decided to call it. All right, nine plus four is H squared. 13 is h squared. Square root of 13 is 3.61, because five tells me I need to go to one kilometers. Okay, so that's step one, all right? I've worked out the length of this unknown side. Step two is that I need to know the total distance that Jerry walked because I need to know how far he walked all together. So I'm going to go three kilometers because that's what he went first plus two kilometers because that's where he went second plus 3.61 because that was the last place that um, the last distance that he traveled. Three plus three is six so it's going to be eight. 8.61 kilometers all up. 8.61 kilometers. Okay, so if we think back to our learning intention, the learning intention was to be able to select key information from a worded problem. It was also to be able to draw a triangle and label it appropriately. Then it was about selecting the right formula, substituting and solving, and this wasn't part of the success criteria, but using your problem solving skills to determine whether you've got the right answer. And that kind of comes back to selecting the key information from the question. So if you can do all of those things, then you've met today's success criteria.